Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Apologies for not being on camera for this video, but I'm finishing off a couple of projects and honestly, time just slipped away from me. With that said, normal service shall return tomorrow. But I want to begin with Intel's Alder Lake and perhaps more excitingly, DG2. DG2, for those who do not know, are Intel's gaming line of processors. There seems to be several different SKUs in this lineup. We'll get more into that in just a second. But this is courtesy of Geekbench, where Tim Episak has made the discovery. I will, of course, link his tweet in the video description. So first of all, Intel's Alder Lake to begin with. And this is being reported as 16 cores and 24 threads. As many of you know, the big cores for Alder Lake have SMT, whereas the small cores do not. And this is also the first time that we've seen the clock frequency being correctly reported. It seems to be running at a decent speed, 4.6 gigahertz. And one can also see the caches laid out as well. The base frequency is 2.2 GHz, although, of course, this is an engineering sample, so there's a very good possibility that we can see these clock frequencies be cranked up for final production silicon. Furthermore, the package, it's a big package that Intel are going to be providing us. It's the Socket 1700, and of course, that's an LGA socket as well. With that said, let's actually focus on Intel's XC. So as I mentioned a moment ago, XC has had a very interesting bring up, and we know that the DG2 series has several uh, SKUs from 128 execution units, which seems to be the lowest end, to 512 execution units, which is the highest end. This equates to 4,096 shading units. And Intel have actually been pretty you know upfront about some aspects of the bring up of Intel XE. We've seen for example Raj Akadori uh, post images of a mesh shader uh, run on the uh, GPU. We've seen various photos of engineering samples although I'll grant you they do seem to be of the server variants and most recently Raja has also shown a photo of a test board and what was really interesting is you can see that 3D Mark uh, was actually running on this and we can actually see all of the different feature tests were enabled which means that this particular uh, series of GPUs will support things like mesh shaders, variable rate shading uh, and also hardware based ray tracing which obviously I think you'll agree those features are very much needed on a new GPU release. So Geekbench here does have a OpenCL score and it's uh, well 7943 and I'm not gonna you know BS you guys that's that's quite meager that's definitely not high performance GPU furthermore we have some confirmation on the specifications of the ES which is being testing tested here excuse me it seems to be the 512 execution variant, although more on that in just a second, as well as the maximum frequency being shown as 1.8 gigahertz. Now, whether that's actually being achieved or not, as particularly consistently, I have absolutely no idea. Furthermore, the device memory is 12.6 gigabytes. There's a couple of possibilities. One, it could be a um, 12 gigabyte model which is being misreported or more likely it's a 16 gigabyte model which again is being uh, misreported either something else is taking the RAM. So circling back to the 512 execution units it is also possible that this is being misreported from the onboard GPU from Intel's Alder Lake. However, I think that this is very unlikely and I do feel that it's much more probable to be a DG2 GPU. From what we understand from various leaks at this point, it is also outfitted with 16 or 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Uh, I don't believe who first leaked that. It was someone on Twitter, but I can't remember who, so I apologize. And that is on a 256-bit bus. And then, of course, going down the stack, we also have different amounts of memory and bus configuration as well. It's going to be very interesting to see how Intel are going to make up for the, quite frankly, rather narrow memory bus. I wonder 
wonder if there is some type of cache on the GPU, kind of like um, how AMD have Infinity Cache, but I'm not saying there is that configuration on Intel's uh, GPU. I'm just saying I wonder if it's possible or whether they have some other method of uh, providing bandwidth, like really fast memory, for example. But from all I understand, it is GDDR6 and not 6X. TLDR from all of this, I think that Intel could actually have a really nice GPU on their hands. I've been hearing quite a bit actually about Intel XE uh, and its performance. So I'm trying to get a few more things together and I'm going to put out a video specifically on Intel XE. But yeah, I'm really hopeful that this uh, series of GPUs is actually decent because I think that it has the potential to really, you know what, let's, let's say worst case scenario, and Intel only have products which kind of go up to the mid-range, let's just say worst case scenarios, but they are competitively priced, I would be totally okay with that. Because the mid-range is just as needing for great competition as the bleeding edge. In fact, honestly, I would even say perhaps even more important, given, let's face it, the fact that most people cannot justify spending five, six, seven hundred plus US dollars on a graphics card. Maybe Raja Kodori's strategy that we saw with say the RX 480 and other Polaris products is going to trickle down for Intel's XE. I don't know. This is just a guess, but I'll be very curious to see what Intel bring to the table. And I am extremely hyped to actually get hold of one of these things. And now the question of the decade. Well, maybe I'm slightly oversolving that, but there is a very interesting report from IGN Italy. I'll of course link them in the video description as well. And basically the Xbox Series X system may actually support virtual reality headsets in the future. If you plonk a VR headset into the console, we'll get into which ones in just a second, it states that uh, you need to update the VR headset in question. And allegedly this only works for an Xbox Series X console, so if you plonk it into an Xbox One, I don't know what it is with me in the word plonk suddenly, but there we go. But if you put it into an Xbox One, it does not work. As one would expect, Microsoft are yet to actually officially comment on this message. So it's very difficult to know whether this is just an oopsie, kind of like a general purpose error message, as Microsoft decide what to do in the future, or it's possible that this is them accidentally slipping in a bit too early. And of course, this can happen. So what about Microsoft? Have they given any indications in the past of VR support? Well, honestly... He, Phil Spencer has stated in the past that he loves the games industry pushing virtual reality, but also added that it's just not their focus. He says that if VR actually gained additional popularity, it would be a, quote, no-brainer, end quote, for Xbox to actually support it. And in reality, of course, the Xbox Series X has really good hardware for VR to run. It has a really good CPU, which is a paramount importance for VR experiences, because obviously high frame rates on VR are critical. And the GPU, too, has a ton of potential. One can argue that with variable rate shading support on the Xbox, as well as mesh shading support, the console is going to be really good at powering VR experiences. It's much like Sony in that respect. Like There's a lot of elements of the PS5 which, quite frankly, are clearly designed around the idea of powering the PS VR 2. The geometry engine, to my understanding, has heavily uh, been influenced by the need of virtual reality, and that's something I'll touch more on in a separate video. So, yeah, the Xbox can certainly do this, but I don't know if this is an indication that Microsoft tomorrow are going to be announcing a VR headset, I think it's more likely, honestly, that this is simply just Microsoft having a general error uh, message in the system in preparation for possibly the announcement. Um, I would like to be proven wrong. I would like for Microsoft to uh, kind of have a VR headset you know, solution. I think it could be pretty cool, particularly with certain experiences. And... We'll just have to wait and see. But personally, I am leaning towards this not being a confirmation of anything. And I think even if Microsoft were working on this, and of course they probably are testing things internally because studios do all of the time. That's the reality of things. Like projects can be bought up even 
be pretty close to actually final working product and they're like you know what this is not actually going to do well on the market it either is not quite as good as our competitors or it's actually better than our competitors, but it's too expensive to mass produce or a thousand other different things. But I think even if, best case scenario, it does come to the market, I don't believe it's going to be this year. I mean, Sony are not releasing the PSVR this year, so I think it's very likely that we're not going to see the hardware released next year. Then again, it's also possible that Microsoft would just simply provide a method for you to be able to plonk in other devices. So ones made by, let's say, Oculus or whomever else, which would be another very interesting way for Microsoft to support this. But yeah, with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you have enjoyed it, definitely, of course, subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on the video. And with that said, thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.